All right, traders, I am back again with another video. And in this video, I want to take time to show you how you can use Ichimoku time analysis a little bit easier, a little bit basic to help you to begin the process of learning it. Ichimoku can be challenging as far as with the time analysis and wave analysis and your observation theory and putting those all together and to make those work for you and understand how to use it the proper way. Furthermore, we don't even know the proper way to use it 100% of the time because when you look back at the original books um, that Mr. Hosada wrote, we probably are not using the tool to the full extent of what he expect, wanted us to. And basically those teachings are all in Japanese. So it's a little bit harder for you to get the um, true concepts based off of not being, being able to have the resources. But with the resources you do have and with the resources we have and able to put things together and learn what we understand, what we know, I'm going to show you how to trade the time analysis a little bit easier to start out with until you can fully grasp it. All right, so stay tuned. I'm going to show you that coming up right now. All right, guys, before I get started, I'd like to offer you a word of encouragement. Second Corinthians 12, 9 states, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. This verse is based on God sending Paul an unspecified thorn in the flesh or a stake in the flesh. Scripture does not explain whether this was something physical, emotional, or connected to some temptation. All it tells us is that a man of profound faith and deep commitment was stricken, causing him to cry out to God repeatedly for relief. We all have these thorns that we cannot escape and may never escape here on earth, but God wants us to rely on his strength to endure these thorns, this disease, this divorce, this drug addiction, or whatever it might be. So often we pray for strength, much like I find myself doing, only to realize that in actuality, what the Lord wants is for us to remain in our weakness, remain with the thorn in our side, much like Paul had to do, and become utterly dependent upon him. God proclaimed that his grace was fully capable of providing everything Paul needed to endure his suffering, just as his grace is fully capable of providing everything that we need to endure our suffering. What thorn is in your side? And are you relying on your own strength? Sometimes that thorn could be a good thing, even though we have to suffer because it forces us to depend totally on God. Turn your thorns over to God and allow God's power to be made perfect in your weakness. May God bless you. So the purpose of Ichimoku is, is to determine the um, direction of the market and the correct structure of the market. The structure of the market is based on the wave theory and understanding the fundamental wave. Emphasis is placed on time relations, the calculation values are given, and the utilization of the equilibrium chart itself is all to clarify the fundamental wave. So in Ichimoku, um, the starting and center points must always be defined. So therefore, the theory of the waves, our wave theory, is very important. Understanding the wave theory will be the foundation of understanding the market. All right, it'll help you to understand the market structure and know the direction of the market. Today, my focus is on the time analysis, but I cannot discuss the time analysis without ensuring that you understand the basics of the wave analysis. So we will first touch on the basics of the wave theory. All right, so here's an I wave. This basically is your I wave 
a bearish I wave, one from one high to the very low. All right, the highest high to the lowest low basically on this chart right here makes this one move an I wave. Then from a, a low to a high, and then a low down gives you a V wave. So a move up and then a move back down which is basically your correction gives you that V wave all right and you have basically a move down and a move up gives you a V wave so this is a V wave structure with a bearish market this is a, B, a V wave structure with a bullish market all right and moving backwards we have your I wave which is this wave, bullish I wave, bearish I wave, bullish V wave, bearish V wave. So that's two wave structure. And then finally, your three wave structure would be your N wave. So I wave up, I wave down, and then I wave back up equals the N wave. All right. And then in a bearish market, the same thing would be the I wave down plus the I wave up. And then the I wave down gives you an N wave. All right. This, this is the main concept of the structure of the market. All right. Using Ichimoku. There's also um, intermediate waves such as your P, Y, and S waves. But I've discussed those in the previous video that I put on YouTube. So you can go back and look at that to learn a little bit more about them. I didn't get that detailed in it. But... Um, we will eventually but right now we want to focus on this three wave structure because we want to be in a market that's trending and basically when you're trending you'll see this structure when you're ranging you may see the P Y and S wave structure alright so now you know the basic wave structure of the market and you will need to understand the time theory also so Ichimoku wave theory has two major tools to consider the time periods, such as the cycles. The, this, they are known as Kian Suchi, which is your basic numerical values, and Taro Suchi, which is equality in the numerical values. All right. So we're going to discuss these numerical values because you're going to need to know these in order to trade using the time analysis. The most basic idea of Ichimoku is that the completion of the three waves in the equal, num equal num uh, numerical value has a great influence on the direction of the market. The equivalent value is the number of days from the high price to the low price or the low price to the high price. The concept is that the um, past market influences the current and future market. And the concept of time sets some numerical values in, adv in advance and looks at the active side of the market. So the basic numer numerical values are 9, 17, and 26. The complex numerical values are 33, 42, 51, 65, 76, 83, 97, 101, 151, 226, and so on. You probably want to write those numbers down and then start to learn them and remember them. And there's also a tool we're going to be able to use to put those numbers in so you can use your tool and know those numbers. All right, so all of these numbers are based on 9 and 26. All right, so 9. 17 equals 9 times 2 minus 1. 26 equals 17 plus 9. 33 equals 17 times 2 minus 1. 42 equals 17 plus 26 minus 1. 51 equals 26 times 2 minus 1. 65 equals 33 times 22 minus 1. 76 equals 26 times 3 minus 2. 83 equals 42 times 2 minus 1. 97 equals 33 times 3 minus 2. 101 equals 51 times 2 minus 1. 151 equals 51 times 3 minus 2. And 226 equals 76 times 3 minus 2. We are subtracting numbers with the complex numbers because the numbers are used twice when at the high or low. Okay? So the theory of market fluctuations in Ichimoku is characterized by the importance of time over price. The current chart shows the time relationship of the basic three wave unknowing wave three. This is called the equal numerical value or title Sochi 
where AB equals BD, also known as your I equals V. All right. So basically, AB, AB, which is your AB equals BD, which is your B, C, and then D. All right. So that would be an I wave, uh, an I wave plus a V wave. Okay. And then we also have AB equals CD, which would be AB equals C D. So you could see I have that on the chart. So basically here's your A B, 33 bars. Your B D would be 33 bars into the future. Alright. A B equals C D. This would be your A B again, 33 bars. And then you would start from C and extend 33 bars, and that's where you would expect D. Alright. Knowing that a B equals B D we would expect this to extend to October 21st for our I equals V which would be a B equals B D and then a B equals C D as I said 33 bars again for a B and then from C to D we expect to see that on November 13th around that time from C 33 bars into the future from that point all right, 33, 33 bars from that point. And then finally you have AB equals CD. So it would, I mean, sorry, AC equals CD. It would be AC, which would be 51 bars. And from C, you're going to go CD. So you would move another 51 bars. So we would expect to see that on December 9th. So therefore, you see, we this is how we can use the time analysis, wave analysis, and observation theory, basically, because now we have a, a level, a a date to shoot for and then we need our level to shoot for okay and on the chart here you can see I have these levels these levels come based off of these prices so a would be at 0 0.97015 B is at 0 0.992199291 and then a is at 0 0.95920 oh sorry <laughs> I'm backwards a 0 0.95920 B 0 0.99291 and then C 0 0.97015 all right so knowing these numbers we can determine these le these levels then we can determine the dates all right this is a little bit more getting advanced into it okay So here's a chart with the equal numerical values, Tato Sochi labeled on a chart. Now we're using the chart instead of the drawing that I created. We see AB equals BD equals 45 bars from AB, and we expect 45 bars from B to D. So again, AB, 45 bars, and we expect B to D, 45 bars, and we expect D to happen on around July 19th, okay? 45 bars from this point. Again, we go here with AB equals CD. So AB again is 45 bars, and then we add 45 bars from point C, and we expect to see that date around August 24th. And then finally, you have your AC equals CD. AC is 71 bars, so you move this to the future 71 bars should have been 71 here not 72 would have give us like October 1st probably instead of the second we move that back one bar so 71 71 45 45 45 45 so from these points you're finding these target dates okay so here I've added the price observation levels of the NVE and the NT level levels um these are levels that are created based on the points a b and c as shown the points that i talked about right here and those numbers are then used to create your target levels which are here and i discussed these levels how to make these levels on my previous video video discuss deeply how to really calculate and get these levels so if you watch my previous video you'll understand that and i'll be putting more out about it how to do that but basically we shoot for these levels now we have a level to shoot for and a time to shoot for a date to shoot for so basically now 
as we watch the market and shoot for our target, if we're in a trade in this area, um, we can shoot for these dates and these levels. So as the market begins to move, we're coming up on the NT target level, but still a few days from Tato Sochi. I equals B or AB equals BD. Now on July 19th, we have hit the AB equals BD equal level. We've hit that level. 45, 45. So that would be AB, BD. From the AB to BD equal value, the market has progressed even lower to the August 24th AB equals CD target. All right. So you see, we put in this pretty much a high the previous day of July 19th and then the market dropped. All right. So that was Hinka B, when, which is day of change. We had a day of change where the market dropped to the downside because previously the market moved higher and then it dropped one day later. So with um, Kian Suchi, these basic, n these numbers, Ichimoku numbers, you're allowed to give or take one to two days. All right. So one to two days, you could see what happened within that time frame for Hinka B, a day of change. So finally, on October 2nd, the market hit the AC, CD equal value and also the, the projected end target. All right. So we hit that end target on October 2nd. So here again, you see we had that date and level that we can shoot for. And it hits right on that target level, October 2nd. Now on October 2nd, the market dropped approximately three days more and then finally made a move to the upside. Okay, the market continued that deep, that move and then made a deep correction here. All right. But in the long run, the E target was hit. So through all that, we were able to reach this level. Now, definitely would have been hard to get into a trade here and then see your profit diminish here. But there's ways to accomplish this. Um, again, depending on how many lots you're trading and so forth. And also just looking at the structure of the market and understanding that structure. Now, you probably would have thought the market was moving to the upside here and probably continuing up to this level. But here you can see the market went back down because you have your three wave structure. Now you did look like you were going to break that structure here. And then the market continued back, moved down to the E level and then finally moved up above the NT level. All right. So that's using a lot of the theory together. And that's just the basics of using the theory, the equal value of using the theory. So once the market put in the low at point B, we can also use Kian Suchi to observe um, if the market will make a low on Kian Suchi. OK. So what I did here was put point B. And use Kian Suchi, move the numbers all the way to point 102 is where we hit this level. So from B to 102, 101 is a Kian Suchi. OK, that's one of the Ichimoku numbers. So give or take one day, one or two days, we're able to hit that. All right. So again, when the market hit that end level and the V level, which was pretty close to it, um, the low fell on day 102 and Kian Suchi is 101. So plus or minus one or two, like I said, and we fall within the value where the market put in the low. Also notice with Ichimoku on the chart, once you moved up from point B to C, this provided a V wave, right? So you had a V wave here. Once the C level was created, we had a Tinkinson cross, right? So we had that crossover right here. And then price continued to the downside. Tinkinson remained below Kijinson until the low was hit where the red arrow is located. And a short time later, we had a TK cross above Kijinsen and the market became bullish. In the whole period, we had um, Kijinsen as your resistance point, right? And throughout this period, the candlesticks remained below Kijinsen and the lows were all re-evaluated. 
this is an indication that the market is in a decline all right because you never broke above Kijin Sen and you and all your lows were basically reevaluated once you had this crossover you never broke above and then all the lows were reevaluated meaning that they were you created new lows this is the, that's the basic indication that the market is in a decline so during the declining market Ichimoku appears in this order from Chiku span candlesticks or market line your Tenkinsen, Kijinsen, single span A and single span B so basically you have those orders your um, Chiku span the price line then your Tenkinsen, Kijinsen, the market span A and span B on a downtrend and an uptrend it'll be the opposite it'll be the same but you'll have different it'll still come that way because coming down you'll have your your span I mean Chico span you'll have um, your price line then you have Tinkinson Kijinson span A span B so based on everything that I've just shown you um, you're probably basically confused okay this is where your dedication to Ichimoku must come come in all right so learning the theories is all Ichimoku technicians desire to do but not all have the desire to seek out and learn and learn how to apply the knowledge so besides that the original books are written in Japanese and getting a copy of the books and also having it translated is not an easy task so do you know what you are learning is true to the original books I can tell you that not everything learned is true to the original books and even what I have taught throughout has um, aspects that do not consist with the original books but in any case we can use the knowledge that we have obtained and put it um, to great use so with everything I have shown you there's an easy way to begin using the time analysis so so I want to take you to the chart so you could start to understand how to use it a little bit easier and get into some trades using it also so let's go right to our charts all right so looking at your charts I want to discuss this um, Swiss franc yen a little bit do a little bit of analysis and then show you how you can catch some of these trades now I'm going to show you on a bigger bigger level but you can also do this on a smaller level meaning that I'm showing you on this daily time frame and I'm looking at the big structure but you can also look at the smaller structure meaning this smaller wave all right I'm looking at the big wave so I'm and what you must always do is find the bottom or the top so if we're looking to trade to the upside we want to trade a bullish market we want to define what structure the market is we're going to look for the low or the high if we see this high but we've put in a low a previous low that's lower than the lowest low on the chart and then the market moved higher then we want to go from that low because the market appears to be bullish at this point so then you would look at the structure of the market look for those waves now I'm going to go with the big wave so what happened here was the market put in this low and I'm going to really go with this low this was a news low but it still should be used but I'm going to go with this low because basically here we put in this pattern which is a Y wave here all right so we put in a Y wave and then the market broke to the upside at this point we're using a chart that's already determined just so I can show you what you need to be doing and what you need to be looking at and understanding and we'll look forward how to use this ahead of that without anything on the chart and look at what we're looking at with not I mean like not knowing what we're going to hit we're just going to look at back testing it basically so what I want to show you now is you can see the structure of the market you get an end wave so basically with that end wave we put in those targets that we were talking about hitting right so those targets were based off of I'm going to show you the lower targets so what I did here inside this big end wave and this is what I'm talking about you have another end wave structure I'm going to show you even the bigger one in this level with this structure we're here okay and then we're looking for this end wave to give us wherever we're going to be so let's suppose we're going to get to this end level which is the normal level that we would shoot for but we have to get through that NT level now I'm not going to say we're not getting through that level the thing is when we shoot for this we have the one two three structure alright so we have to complete it 
and let's see basically I'm gonna take this off the chart now take this off the chart and take this off the chart and this so we can see what we're looking at so now when we look at this chart we believe that we're still going to continue higher to get to this end level why do we believe that a couple reasons first of all let's look back in history all right so the low from the very lowest low to the next immediate high previous high or the next relevant high where we looked at this we moved up actually let me use this so from this point to this point where the high was was 72 dead bars 104 days all right so the market should move at that same rate if the trend is going to continue we don't want to see 72 bars and we never got to anywhere we didn't move any much higher we want to see 72 bars 104 days moving up to this end level so when we do that we're going to go to the next leg right here and we're only at 56 bars all right and 78 days we're far from what we need to see so that means this market is accelerating strongly 74 bars 104 days would put us close to that V level so we're thinking we could quite possibly see that trade to the upside at the V level so this has nothing to do basically with the with the um, time analysis that I was going to show you because I'm looking at this and I'm still seeing that we do have a trade opportunity coming off of this fractal level we bounced off of this fractal point we're looking for the market to continue higher okay so if we're looking for that we're looking for price action to enter this long market at this point because we have a support level here so we're going to be looking for a long here now we could get into the trade previously than before this all right before this point but at this point right now we're looking to go long at this point right now now we need price action entry a lot of times i go down to the four hour time frame and find that or the one hour time frame so basically on my four hour i don't really have that entry yet okay and what I like to do to not confuse people is hide my Ichimoku because I already did my analysis on Ichimoku did all of that now I'm just gonna look at the chart and try to find the entry when people leave Ichimoku on the chart on the lower time frame whoops what they do is now they start to look at the four hour time frame and you start to use that as your analysis when you already made analysis for your daily time frame so therefore I don't like to keep it on my chart when I show people what I'm looking at because I already made my analysis from the daily time frame now let's go to take this off the chart again for a minute and then let's go back to daily so remember we said about the acceleration of this leg and the acceleration the acceleration of this leg and the acceleration of this whole leg this leg was much faster so probably this tr the trend is still strong and intact so we can trade with this level but now we could have gotten into the market previously a couple of different ways so let's go here like this I'm gonna put Ichimoku back on my chart now when we look at this low so we can start from this low we wouldn't know this was a low yet right so when you're trading we don't know this is a low we have to see the market move and move higher so then we probably don't know until we break this level here but then we're trying to figure out how to get into the trade well now what you're going to do is use your Kian Suchi you're going to use your time analysis so you're going to take your fib zone tool and you're going to put it on here and then you're going to put the numbers in so basically what you do here is go in here and put your numbers your um, Kian Suchi in here and then save it and then whenever you use this you can just use these numbers to find where you want to trade now the way that I want to trade is I want to see we're going from the low so we expect the market to make a new low on Kian Suchi or another another low on Kian Suchi that's what we're looking at but we also want to see it happen at Kijinsen all right or at Tinkinson because that's where we're going to look to make our trade 
So when we look at this, we don't see any lows. We do see a low here, but we're kind of away from everything. We could have entered the market, but you might have been into a little losing trade here. Um, again, this wasn't a low. We, we were sitting on Kijin Sim, but you, on day 42, you expect a reaction because this is going to be a possible day of change. All right. Henka B on Kian Suchi, your number. And then the next thing is you didn't see any numbers here. So no Kian Suchi here, but then you did have it here. So Kian Suchi and then the next day market made a bullish and golf and you should have been in a trade there. You would have made some good profit because now you're using these numbers. One, nine, seven, 26, 33, 42, 51, 65, 76, 83, 97 to look for these lows bouncing off of Kijinson. All right. All right. So the market must be trending for us here. We would have looked at this and the market wasn't trending and you would have not known really how to trade this properly. There's ways to trade this also, even with Kian Suchi, but I'm not going to get in, get deep into that. All right. Because you have a mid level here that you start counting and looking at, but we're not going to get deep into that right now. So we want to go forward and look at this. Let's move forward because we should have been able to catch this trade a couple of times maybe. So now we went to this low. We again, we don't know this is a low. So what you need to see, create the low like you did here. Watch your TK crossover. You get a crossover that's bullish. You break structure right here. So now you know you have a low, you, you're coming off of a low point quite possibly. And then you can see the market move higher. Now, a day of change, here basically when we came back to um Kijinsen, we were right here day 33 and then we had a bullish engulfing and then we should have never been looking back all right so we had a great trade there a great trade opportunity there all right so again basically just look you put your low once you've defined that this is the low the lowest low and then the structure is continuing with this end wave pattern all right and even if you didn't know the wave for sure long as you know that you've got this low. Now you're not going to go from this low because you correct it. So you got a V wave. So now you found this was the low again. So you're going to take this point and you knew it was the low based off of breaking structure and also the TK crossover. And then once you broke that structure, had the TK crossover, you want to look for the long trade. You had a nice entry for day 33 with a bounce on the level and then a bullish and golfing. Had another opportunity this was a rejection on 30 on 42, but you rejected Tinkinson and then you moved higher and then the market came back on day 51 and then fit on day 51, 52. You should have been in the trade long and then the market gave you opportunity. Now we're looking where we are now. There's no possibilities right now based off of the time are for bouncing off of Tinkinson or Kedinson, but we are bouncing off of this zone and just pure price action. So we want to see that. All right. Now, if we break through this, we may see a low set somewhere within because we're how many days away from that are we? We're basically, I guess, six bars away. OK, so that would be like next Monday. We would see this level, which would be August 4th. It is we could see something on this point. Where will we be at that point? Will we already have moved higher? and then correct it a little bit. So would we see something like this quite possibly? Let me figure it out. Maybe we see something like this a little bit move higher and then maybe a small correction and then quite possibly another move higher and getting us to that V and N level. All right. So we could see something like that. Now, if we did, if we did still fall deeper, I think you, then you may see your low put in in this area here, all right, within the next couple days. But I believe we can count on this structure to hold. So that's why I'm looking at a trade at this point for the Swiss franc yen. Okay, so that's how you could basically use your um, use your um, Kian Suchi with your um, tool, Fibonacci time zone tool. So let's let's look at another one. Um, let's look at the Euro USD. So looking at Euro USD, um, you could see right here we already had a, a nice little 
this now previously I showed you a Y wave this is a P wave and then the market broke out of that P wave all right so five wave structure then the market breaks out and continues higher this looks pretty much like what we just looked at but there's a couple things I want to show you and a couple things you want to pay attention to again we want to measure that that acceleration of the market now we don't know we wouldn't know the full acceleration okay so I'm only gonna go from here and that's 19 bars and then I'm going to go from this low basically I'll go from over here because it was still flat and we're about 20 bars so we're about the same pace moving higher okay so we're about the pr pretty much the same pace the market's pretty strong still haven't really lost a lot of acceleration pretty pretty strong you could see the angulation here so we should see the market hit this end level quite possibly and it may be the E level now I didn't put my days in here to figure out when and how to get into the market so I'm going to show you how you could have gotten into this market now this is could have I want to show you how to really do it so let's get, let's go could have and then let's show how to really do it all right so I'm going to show you could have right here you put your once you find that low again find that low watch the structural break so you knew you broke structure right here and the market was moving higher so this is where you're going to put your low right so you would put your low right there day one and then throughout this period you could see a couple like when you're using fluctuation for your P wave Y wave it's ch you trade it a little bit different still using the time analysis okay but at this point we're looking for a bounce on Kijinsen so from this point we didn't have any bounces on Kijinsen because the market was really moving higher but then we got a correction now the one thing with the correction we didn't get back to Kijinsen but also you want to use your um, fib retracement levels because with Ichimoku there's a one-third value and a half value notice that everything is half value pretty much um, the half value from your high to your low nine days all right 26 days 52 days midpoints all of those so that's why Ichimoku is uh, um, the mid the half value but also we use a one a one third value so that one third value is going to be 33.3 .3. I didn't put 33.3 .3 on my fib retracement tool but you could um, and then what you want to look for is a bounce on that 33.3 .3 or that 50 point, uh, percent level now on a 27 period market you're going to bounce on Kijinsen 50 percent all the time you're not going to bounce on it but that's going to be your level your 50 percent level all the time all right on a 27 bar move now with this here um, we're more than 27 bars it's a little lower but you could see when you put your fib retracements in you're looking for that 33.3 .3 or that 50 all right so then here you could see we bounced on that 38.2 level on day 65 with a bullish engulfing good opportunity to get into market again Hank B we're coming off of looking at the market flat nothing happening at all right here but then we get a bullish in Gotham so we had day 76 and then finally we get a move on 83 but that was there was nothing that you really would have probably looked at at that point so that's looking at how you could trade that and you would then shoot for your targets based on your levels and then you could also still use your what I would do now I want to see where my target is and I'm gonna go from these highs and I'm gonna to start to look at the high because I want to see the market react on these days to hit a high level at the on these levels on these days on these levels all right so that's basically what you would do so let's look at it let's do this thing backwards instead of forwards we'll use the euro New Zealand dollar chart so let's go to that so now basically we're looking to see how we can get into the trade all right so we would start to use our analysis time analysis we would probably think this could be a, a high the highest point on the chart okay You 
could see the structure was broken now. And you can see you got a TK crossover. So now you can start to really use your analysis. Um, so what we're going to do is put this tool back. And we're going to put it on that high. So now you want to start looking at these numbers to see when you can get into a trade. Now what you want to bounce off of is your Kijinsen or Tinkinson, right? So you want to bounce off of those levels. So you're going to wait to see what the market does. You're going to follow the market. And on day 17, nothing. On day 26, the market made a change. You're going to short the market at that point. Because previously, you made a high right here. Really hit this was the high level, but the market made a little, um, a nice um, evening star pattern here also. And then you also had bouncing off of your cloud here. On day 26, you had the market make a nice move to the downside. That's where you would have taken your short. Okay. And then as we watch the market pulls all the way back. And now on day 20, on day 33, we're right on Kijinsen. On day 33, right on Kijinsen. All right. We're expecting something to happen we're expecting a change hink a b all right because we're on kian suchi number 33 and then the market drops a little bit we're in the trade we should be shorting that market right there the market gives us some profit then moves higher and then on day 42 we did have a move higher but on day 43, which is one day off, you probably wouldn't have thought about entering that trade. All right. And even here, you may not have, because now you're sitting on Kijinsen, but your structure hasn't changed. So I would have taken a short here. And then the market drops. And you would have taken your short based off of the price action. All right. And what I also like to do is go to my lower time frame and, and look at that. Again, take Ichimoku off your chart and look for the, um, you draw your levels and then also look for price action. Now with this here, you did have price action because you had three inside out, three inside down. All right, three inside down, market dropped to the downside. You could have been into your trade bouncing off of Kijinsen pretty much because you put in a high. You broke the upside of Kijinsen and then broke back to the downside. And then the market continued. On day 51, you're sitting right near Kijinsen. Day 52, you rejected Kijinsen. Good sign for us. Definitely want to, and that, this was good price action right here. So you would want to put your entry short and then let the market give you what it's going to give you. And it gave you that. All right. So that would be how you would trade this pretty much. And you can see we made some good profit. Now, in the meantime, what I also would do here. So we went from, we, I showed you the bigger scale, but on the lower scale, you could go A, B, C equals D. What do you, what, what level is D going to be? You're going to be looking for your N, your E, your V, your NT level. Let's just see where this went. Because when I got into this trade, when I put my entry right here, I would have suspected this A, B, C for the N wave to the downside. I would be shooting for my targets. Let's see where our targets are. Let's see if we hit those targets. I'm going to put these in. Let's look at them, see what we got. All right, so see the um, levels on our charts. So we would have entered the market at this point. And then you could see we went down to our main level, which would be our end level. We went through that level and came through our V level a little bit found support pretty much at that level had a nice little n and v zone here the market found support there probably corrects itself you can now start to use these levels to get into your trade short again if the market comes back up and bounces on those levels all right so let's see what the market does continuing forward
And you would have been good to take your trade and you would have made your profit down here and you got a bullish and golf and you know to get out of the market there. All right. And now the market pretty much is flat. And you did achieve your, um, you broke through your V level again. Now again, here on uh, day 83, pretty close to the Kijensen level. Broke above Kijensen level. Now an opportunity to short this again. Now where would I be shorting for? I'm hoping to get through this point and get down to here. If we can't break this structure, then eventually we're going to see the market change direction. And that trade would have been not good. You would have lost that trade. And then the market pretty much is done. And we're done. Okay. So hopefully that helped you out, showed you a little bit of an easier way. Remember what you want to do to find how to trade this with these um, Kian Suchi numbers. Basically get your tool, put the numbers in. Now you have your tool. You're going to look for the extreme high or the extreme low depending on the direction of the market. So if we're bearish, look for that extreme high, look for your crossover, and then start looking for bounces on Kijinsen and Tinkinsen on the day of um, Kian Suchi after you put the tool at the high level or the low level. So coming off of a low would pretty much be, you would put the tool at, um, once you realize you got an all low there, like this point, this is very good. This would be a low, but there's a lot of lows on the chart. But just to show you, then you would put it on the low instead. All right. And determine that was a low. You found it was a low. You broke structure and then you had a TK crossover. Put the market there and now you start to look for your bounces on these levels. All right. So that's what you're going to do. That's how you're going to trade this. And hopefully it helps you out. All right. So guys, till next time, have a great one. Hope this is helping you a little bit to understand some of the more advanced um, concepts of Ichimoku. Ichimoku is very challenging once you get into the theories. So you have to put your heart into learning it. It's not going to be super easy. But if you want something, you go after it. And if this is something you want, you go after it. Spend time learning it. And eventually it'll benefit you a lot. All right. So hopefully this helped you out. God bless. So long. Yeah.